Welcome to your Daily Smash for <laughs> Wednesday, June 26, 2024. I'm Rick. I'm Kelly. Happy Hump Day. <laughs> I got my physical on Tuesday morning. So how did that feel like? Which part? When I had my prostate exam? Like how did they have to go all the way up there <laughs> to feel it? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Yeah. Uh, my dad had prostate cancer, and my dad said that every man gets prostate cancer, like, eventually. I couldn't believe you said that to me when I got home, because that's exactly what the doctor told me. He's like, every, everyone will get it, but he said to me, you're not likely going to die from it, because you'll die from something else before you that happens. I don't know. My Uncle Charles had prostate cancer, and it was, he didn't take care of it, and it spread into his bones. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about the good news, which is that I'm so That's healthy. why you have to... You have to take care of it. You have, yeah, you have, you have to do that. I am. I do that and uh, and other things. To Sorry I don't have any makeup on today. I woke up with a little bit of a sty in my eye right here. Oof. Hurts. That's not the first time. time. I know. I, I don't know what it, it's from, but it's a little... It's, makeup? I guess. It just gets in there. It clogs, clogs the pore, I guess. It looks That's, like a little zit in there. Do you see it? I, I didn't see it at first, but I see it now. It sucks. Uh, so I, we can't got wear, some, I can't wear makeup. We got some great reaction to the Andy Cohen story that we're going to share with you in a little bit. I, I was entertained by all of you. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I find you guys so fast. Yeah, there's some great comments. And, and it's got to feel good to, to, to have that support. I, it feels good to have your support yeah. backing me up over there. And thanks you to guys really, really... I don't know. I, I get more of a kick, I think, out of you guys. Like You make me so happy. Seriously, you all of you make me well. So speaking happy. of that, we have a great video to share. Um, this couple showed up at the Velvet Rope Motel after we ran that video on Tuesday's show. And David sent it to me. David, the designer, he, he designed it, right? Yeah, yeah. And does he also own it? Uh, I don't know if he owns it. I'm, I'm not sure if there's a, a bunch of investors, but we went out to eat last night. At Javier's. We took Jolie to, for her birthday dinner. And this guy comes up to me and he's like, oh my God, you were just with my friend David. Yeah. And he's, he David was David. his best man at his wedding, this guy. Yes. It was, I mean, what a small world. <laughs> it's crazy. Isn't it a crazy world? Yeah. We talked to the guy for a while. Very cool. Uh, so then David texts Kelly today and sends him a couple video clips. He said six people showed up today. Just showed up out of nowhere because they saw it on the Smash and they wanted to check it out. Yeah. And he gave this couple a tour. I want to show you their... their Look at uh, this lovely couple. I love you guys. Thank you for going over there. Yeah. Wait, wait. I want to show them th this? this couple. This is Jeff, and we found this place on Kelly and Rick's podcast. You have to look at their podcast to see everything that is going on here this is a beautiful place it's outstanding it's the best boutique in palm Springs. thank you guys for coming You're i really appreciate welcome. you guys check everything it out is, everything is pristine. pristine and he asked me do you guys have a frank sinatra room and i said wait a minute the yes. best for last yes. baby we got the yes. red pack everything we got them all here is to a t well to we look tea. forward to seeing you guys again we are coming back we will be thursday. Back. come make some memories here we'll be here yes, thursday we will right. love you guys <laughs> thank you we'll so much and then how nice was that i love these guys well here's the here's but here's a frank sinatra room okay. wow. Wow. look they, how cute this couple is they cleaned it up we were there they i think someone had just checked out or uh -huh. something it's a beautiful motel it I mean, they, is so clever and we didn't show a lot of the bathrooms. The bathrooms, everything's different. It, 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 it's so neat. And they all have these little areas like yeah, like that, that a, little like yeah, kitchen yeah. area. Yeah, this is. It's, it's a super cool place. And uh, I like those little, <laughs> like n n those niche yeah. hotels. Yeah. You know, those boutique hotels. Me too. I, but, re I really want to have my 50th birthday party there. I want to have, I want to have um, one of those Unicorns that spins around. Oh, that really you fast. ride. <laughs> no problem. Because I was September gonna ask 26th you. Yeah. Is going to be a beautiful time there. It's gonna be hot. It'll be hot. So it's still hot there in the desert in September. Oh, Very yeah. hot. Very hot. I wanted to ask you though. We could have hundreds of people who want to come to this party, and I'm wondering if that place is can accommodate a big group, or or if you even want that many people at your birthday. 
Because you know, we, well, that's the thing. I feel like I'm going to like um, hurt a lot of people's feelings. You know how you know how to eliminate people from going to your birthday party? Have a destination party? Bingo. Yeah, like Greece. Yes. We talked about that. Yeah. But I like a big party. The problem is you're stretched so thin. You can't spend quality time with everyone because there's too many people there. But I also don't want to exclude people, so we need to talk about that. I think that. we should do it just like Gina Kirchy. My friend Gina Kirchy, for her 50th, she, she got a brand new car. She didn't have the, par- she didn't have the party. <laughs> no, we're having a party. I got to take her out, by the way. I want to thank Bryn for coming over today and helping you set up your Amazon storefront. It was difficult. Okay, like, I, I, if you guys follow Jennifer Aiden, I know you guys don't like her, but I, I do. And I'm following her on her, her uh, Instagram lives, like on her link tree. Yeah. She's got fabulous stuff there on Amazon. Oh, really? Like, fabulous. Like, I was trying to figure out, like, how to do it and how to, like, link on her LTK. She had these cute pants. What's LTK? Oh, link, link to? No. Oh, what is it? <laughs> link to know, I think. Oh, link to know? I think. Oh. I don't know. So so you're going to actually, it's going to be like a QVC situation where you're going to be on there live talking about your products? Yes. Of the stuff that you like? It was kind, It was complicated. I, yeah. I felt like I was like, I, I used to pick up things pretty quick. Yeah. I was like, wait, can, wait, I have to record this. I feel like now I'm like, you know, remember like like when you're a kid and your grandma took forever to like learn how to do the microwave? Yeah. I'm feeling like that now. <laughs> well, technology kids can pick it up like this. Technology's moving so fast <laughs> and wait till you see with the in the news segment coming up in a bit. Uh it's it's frightening what's going on in the world. Okay? That's all I'm gonna say. What? The AI stuff? Beyond AI. Um, I want to read some comments about the Bravo Andy situation. Okay. Robin Smith 927. Andy Cohen is a hypocrite. People like him are always on board until it starts to impact them. He is the OG of canceling people. TS1X1CL. I stopped watching Bravo quite a while ago. Too woke and honestly boring. Not an Andy Cohen fan at all. I think he's a snake. And Roxanne Montaigne said, I have to agree with you on Andy Cohen. You're better off, Kelly. The first time I watched RHOC, I knew whomever was behind it didn't like women. I stand behind this theory now. And Susan Waxman said, Andy has made millions by exploiting women. He is weak. I want to figure out how to make millions exploiting men. <laughs> <laughs> Ni Enro said, Kelly, you, should, you absolutely should be reimbursed that 16 k That entire thing was just ridiculous. And look now, CDC and BG admitting it was all a scam, basically. There was no science behind any of it. Gene Henson said, you two are so dang cute. Makes my day watching you together. And OC was never the same without you. You were the most truthful and real person on there. Love you both. Thank you. Robin Smith said, I want to stay at the Velvet Rope. I love that place. So creative and fun. Oh, that's so nice. I just I found that couple. I'm sorry if we put you on blast here, but you just totally made my day by going <laughs> there. I just want to let you guys know. I was choked up watching that. It's just uh, cool that, that we can share something and then it, it brings joy to other people. Yeah, it brought joy to me, too. Yeah. Like all of us. It was just... Smile, smile, laughter, and joy wrote, Kelly and Rick, OMG, I'm a middle child, and my older brother was the same. Kelly, I had the shoe incident too. I ran for my life and my brother stubbed his toe on the corner of the wall. I love your stories. I can relate. Your neighbor in Palm Desert, I have the same common sense. We have it. You and Rick are winning. That is so nice. Thank you for the sweet message. Yeah, that's really I, I, nice. That was really, really nice. Um, Very nice. Thank a you. lot of folks like the Trixie, uh, the, sorry, the Velvet Rope. V... I V E Z A J. Looks like old Hollywood. I love it. My brother's a gay designer if you need anything. Haha, <laughs> that's cute. Kalik Jr. No shade to Velvet Rope, but I like Trixie more. Velvet Rope was more all over the place to me. Trixie seems more cohesive. It's the same designer. <laughs> it is. Yeah, that guy, David. But I but designed the Trixie. But he's right because the Trixie is it's one theme. You're right. Yes. It is but yeah, because it is one theme. It's 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 uh Who's the guy has is the um you like this designer that they use a Jonathan lot Jonathan Adler. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of Jonathan Adler. There's a at lot the, of Jonathan at the Trixie. Right. But this one the, It's the, cohesive. The Velvet Rope has a theme, it's just different movie stars, different, you know, old Hollywood. Right. 
And the no politics decision is still controversial. It's so funny, you guys. Half of you say, don't do politics. The other half of you want us to do <laughs> politics. I feel like there's so much politics in the world. And I feel like Rick does the news on Newsmax. It's a lot of politics on there. I think that, you know, there's there's a lot of outlets. You guys can watch the news. Uh, we have the Patreon where we speak politics. You guys want to join there. You guys can listen there. It's only five bucks. Right. That's so one gallon of gas here in California. Um, or a cup of coffee. Or a cup of coffee. But, but I, I, I don't want to do politics here because... I want to make this light and fun. Mm -hmm. And I will bring up politics like I did yesterday. Yeah. Um, It happens organically. It happens organically. I will. But there's just so... We want to have things that are light and fun and and joyful, right? Like, I I want to talk about things that are fun and, and, and... yeah, no, I, I, I agree, actually. It, you, you do so much of it. It's 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 a lot. I feel like it's a, a lot for you. It's, it's a lot, right? Mm-hmm. Like It is. Uh, I do want to say, though, Fallon 12 wrote, get over the no politics clause. This is an election year. It's important to speak the truth or else. What Kelly said is true. If you go to our Rick and Kelly show on Patreon, we talk politics there. But I agree. This is a, a safe place, a fun place. And, and also, we have a lot... A lot of people that are from Europe. We have a lot of Europeans, and we have mm-hmm. a lot of Canadians. They're yeah. not interested in hearing American politics. Maybe the general stuff, but not the ins and outs, the I, intricacies. And I, I don't. They're not interested in that. Yeah. And we have a huge. I mean, we've showed you before our numbers. We have a lot of people from South Africa, Australia, mm-hmm. New Zealand, um, Finland. You know, I mean, a lot all over the world. So Africa, Africa, Canada. But if you do care about politics and you plan to watch the debate, you don't have to watch it on CNN. You can watch it on Newsmax too. I'm hosting the hour that I always do at 7 p.m. It's on Eastern. Coming News News Network. It's on CNN, but we're going to simulcast it on Newsmax too on N2. So if you watch my show at seven, we're going to do a pregame show at eight. Pregame for the debate. The debate is, I think, at nine. Nine o'clock for an hour and a half. And then I think I'll be back on after for a post-game wrap-up. Can we show that um, Jimmy Kimmel thing? Can we show it on YouTube? It's a or quick is that, clip. I, I think, or do you think we'll get in trouble? Because I want people to see it. I think it's pretty funny. Um, I mean, I guess we can try. It's just, I just sh- shot a quick clip of when they did their uh, unnecessary censorship on Jimmy Kimmel, and he, Jimmy Kimmel. And he picked a clip of me... When I guest hosted at 8 p.m. On, on the regular news, Max, it's, it's pretty funny. Watch this. All right, and one more thing before we barrel ahead. It's Thursday night. That means it's time to bleep and blur the big TV moments of the week. It is the time for this week in Unnecessary Censorship. Today is Take Your to Work Day. So if you plan on bringing your into work, make sure you have permission. We weren't able to uh, execute at a high level. So uh, when I was f***ing everybody's f***s, that was more of a sign of respect. The Los Angeles Regional f- Bank is expanding its ability to f- more people in need. Caroline, when is the Trump campaign going to stop deep f***ing? I am a, a young woman, uh, and it's hard to keep up with him. He's constantly f***ing around the clock. For people like Javier. I thought it was funny. <laughs> It's, it's, it's kind of uh, cool that they, because there, there are millions of clips they could choose from. That's so at least the Rick second time. Rick did uh, um, Eric Bowling, right? Because he left. Eric Bowling left, so they have guest hosts rotating through that 8 p.m. slot every night. That would be so awesome if you got that. I mean, obviously, they're paying attention to you. They know who you are. Yeah. Right? I, yeah. I, I think that you deserve to get that Eric Bowling job. Well, I, I think that would be awesome. You I just agree. slide right in there. You know, and I have the experience. I have the chops, but I don't make that decision. You know, there's always someone else making a decision, and you never know what they're, what they're thinking. I do have a hot topic. Hot topic. It's one of Kelly's favorite movies, Idiocracy, coming to life in Flo- in Philadelphia. Look at this highway sign. Can you tell what's wrong with it? It says Central, spelt wrong, in Phila, <laughs> Chester. Phila, I That's th- got to be joke. That can't no, no, be no. for real. No, the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation misspelled a key word on the news sign southbound on the interstate on I-95 
directing drivers to center tall Philadelphia instead of central Philadelphia. Commuters promptly noticed the embarrassing error, posting photos of it to X that have since gone viral. They misspelled central. Oh my God. What an epic fail, someone wrote. PennDOT soon realized its goof and hid the flub sign under a black tarp until the troublesome how typo was fixed. This is how they fixed it. They bolted on a rewritten central over the center tall. Center tall. <laughs> Can you how stupid do you have to be? You're making a, a highway sign and you're not gonna make sure that everything's spelled properly on the sign. There was actually a quote here. We were so focused on getting this done and reopening the 95 Cotman ramp that we moved a little too quickly and forgot to proofread. Sorry, Philadelphia. <laughs> How do you not have to proofread Central? <laughs> don't you learn that in like first grade? Whoever don't put you those learn letters how to, in... Don't you learn how to spell Central in first grade? Probably. Who, who wrote that sign? Like who was putting the letters on the sign in the first place? And nobody noticed that Central was misspelled? They were in that big of a hurry? Wow. That's an insane. Okay. And in the news now. In the news. Remember the Terminator? Terminator. I'll be back. One of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah. I, I memorize every one of Arnold's lines in the, term, in the first Terminator. Is that, is that, is that when the one where that girl was in, in the prison and then she had that little boy? Is that Terminator? That was Terminator 2, I believe. And then she ran out of there? Or 3. I think I was Terminator. Two. Terminator Two was great too. Yeah, that was great. But the original Terminator. Is that he where was it? looking for Sarkana. Yes. Sarkana. No, so the number two wasn't with that little boy. That, that. Yeah, the boy become. You know, he has a boy. He has a boy. That's the first one. That's. Well, that's the second one. She hadn't had the kid yet in the first one. Okay. Okay. But she hooks up with the guy who comes to to kill the Terminator, John Connor. She hooks up with him. No, John John Connor is the other guy. I had to watch Terminator again. Anyway, the reason I bring it up... I was like 10 when that came out. Is but because... I liked that movie. I liked Terminator 2. It was great. It was one of the best sequels of all time. Uh-huh. <laughs> the reason I bring it up is because a team of scientists have unveiled a robot face, a robot face, covered with a delicate layer of living skin that heals itself and crinkles into a smile. You see it there? Yeah. In hopes of developing more human-like cyborgs. It's happening. Robots are going to take over the Earth. Okay? This is... Get ready for... <laughs> Termin- I don't know how they knew when they made the Terminator that robots were actually going to take over the Earth. But they are. <laughs> and here's the proof. Okay? They're already, they're already making skin... For robots to make them look more lifelike. This is just the first generation or the first generation we know about. The skin was made in a lab at the University of Tokyo from a mixture of human skin cells grown on a collagen model and placed on top of a 3D printed resin base. Scientists believe the living skin could be a key step in creating robots that heal and feel like humans. I want a I want a robot that just like can clean my house and like cook me dinner. Wouldn't that <laughs> be awesome? That's how it starts, and then that robot is going to turn on you, murder us all, it can and get mad, and, and assume you're. <laughs> they have feelings. They're going to get the the word from their robot boss that it's time we're making a move now, take over, take care of business, and all the robots are going to start killing all the people, just like the Terminator. I don't think that's going to happen. This living skin... I mean, it could happen. I don't know. They're oh, saying that a- They say that AI... Well, we had this guy that was working for the government, right? Like, top secret. Yeah. W- w- he told us this story that... Oh, yeah. Wait, tell him that story. About how they gave robots... In a test, they gave the robots the ability to control the drones that were, that were armed armed drones and the robots as soon as they had the opportunity turned the armed drones on on their on the people yeah the, the, on the, the people like on the people running the program not the enemy they turned them on the people who were telling them what to do but they had like a hub there that they, they, they ended up shutting it down but it was like i mean it was when they told us that story i was yeah. like what this is just like like the terminator right yeah. like this is given like- the opportunity the robots took it upon themselves to kill their hosts. That's 
this this is not I'm not making this up. I'm I'm extrapolating, but this living skin would be particularly useful for robots that interact closely with humans, such as healthcare, service, companion, and humanoid robots where human like functions are needed. The tiny robot face is capable of smiling and the tissue can heal itself. Okay, they can figure this shit out, but they can't figure out how to cure cancer. Huh? Like, like I don't get that. <laughs> like, like, they can figure how to make skin. And by the way, what can't, can they make, can they, if they can do that, can they, like, burn skin that people have been, like, you know, like, can they rejuvenate that kind of skin? I, I don't know. It's, 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 I don't know. You know? These are very good questions. You're a very good investigative journalist. I want to know more. You ask very good questions. Speaking of good questions, we interviewed Dr. Jen on last week's Rick and Kelly show. If you haven't seen it yet, you can subscribe now and you'll have access to that in all 148 Rick and Kelly episodes. But the one thing that I couldn't put in the episode last week was this Instagram that you did with her. Because the file that we had was, was corrupted. Corrupt. But we have a copy of it that we're going to play here at the end of the show. So we're a little unconventional. We're going to end the show with this. I think it's like 10 or 11 minutes long, right? Yeah. Of Kelly and Dr. Jen. Well, tell me, tell us, well, tell us about what it is. So I have a couple of gay friends, okay? And one of them sent me a picture. And I'm not going to say who, but they're pretty famous. And they said, I don't understand why Tamara dresses like she's 19 years old when she's got terrible skin yeah like terrible yeah like she should not be dressing like that like someone needs to tell her <laughs> well i'm telling you now tamra and so okay. they sent me pictures of like the the like the skin that she because she dresses like a teeny bopper you yeah know? yeah there's there's you gotta dress appropriate for your age age appropriate yeah Tamara doesn't know how to dress. She dresses okay sometimes, uh -huh. but she tries to act like she's younger. And there's just sometimes you just you gotta realize that. But it wasn't just about how they dress. I mean, your thing with Dr. Jen was more about the work she's had done, right? Isn't right. that what you were breaking down? That was the breakdown. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to be mean. She looks she looks great. Okay, for her age, she looks phenomenal. But. You know, she said that that skin damage. Yeah. She says that you can you can reverse that. Oh, you can. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's watch. Without this. further ado, uh, thank you guys for being here. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And here is Kelly with Dr. Jen Armstrong. Hi, it's Dr. Jen, and welcome back to Celebrity Review Special Edition. Today we have a special guest who had a lot of questions about Tamara, and so we brought her in so she can ask specifically, what is going on? Hi, everybody. <laughs> okay, um, I want to know what Tamara looks so different. And I, listen, I we all get procedures and everything done, but I want to know what she did and like why she looks the way she does. Okay, so why does she have such a long forehead? Well, you can see in her before picture, so she has bangs here, so you can't really see as, uh, how, how long the, her forehead is. But when people talk way up in the hairline, which I suggest doing because those lines here drive me crazy when people don't, it can really elongate the forehead. And you can see in her after picture, it looks like her, like, uh, I can't point that way. Uh, in her after picture, it actually looks like her hair is like receding back, but I think it may be the way that her hair is cut. Okay. Okay, and why does her eyebrows look so heavy here compared to there? Okay, so in her before picture, see uh, see here, like in her medial brow, the distance between her inner canthus and her, her medial brows, it's like a high distance. Where in her after picture, see how it's much shorter here? So it looks like her medial brow has dropped, which means when they did her corrugators, these muscles right here, you, they went in too deep, which dropped the medial brow. So the way that we fix it is we do little tiny drops of Botox here mm -hmm. and here, and it can lift that up. Why does she look like an alien right here? She looks like a total alien. What 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 is that, and how what'd she do? Okay, well we can't see in her before picture, but you can see a little bit that you don't see that that drastic 
um, upward turn here, but her hair is covering where her temple is. So this is caused by filler here and in the temple. So she's overfilled in her temple. We should have a little bit of a divot here to keep us looking natural. So it goes straight her from her forehead to her temple to her cheek goes just straight like this. See, there's no like natural um, curvature here. I thought that you were supposed to have your your temples yeah. filled. You should have your having your temples filled looks great, but when you overfill them and then you fill the lateral cheek right here. You end up looking like an alien? Then it ends up being like too, <laughs> too round right here. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. It should be a, a little tiny bit of a curvature here, and then this should be brought down, dissolved. Okay, what's next, Kelly? Why is that nostril right there, I'm like picking her nose, why is that higher than the other nose? Well, she's had a rhinoplasty, so we can see in her before picture, her nose is much wider here. Mm -hmm. Um, and the bridge of her nose is, mu is much wider as well. So in her after picture, you see it's much more narrow here, and uh, the general width of her nose is more narrow, but when they did the surgery, they took too much from this side, making it the nose a little lopsided. And so something we can do, which won't completely fix it, but will make it softer, is that we put a little bit of filler actually in this outer, uh, the, the outer nose right here, and then we can Botox too to make it come back in. But we actually wanna add a little bit of volume right in here. And I've done that before for people. In your other celebrity review, you said that she doesn't look like she has lip filler. To me, it looks like she has lip filler right here compared to there. Right, so the one that the celebrity review I did earlier, um, it looked like her lips were pretty the same, like the same from her before and her after, but clearly she has had lip filler in this after picture. You can see that um, the the bow of the of the lip that right here, the, this the bow, this mm -hmm, part mm -hmm. is accentuated in her after picture here, and then her bottom lip is much uh, much more filled as well. And then she also overlined her lips for this picture. <laughs> And I know that this was for her confessional, and I think that Chelsea's her makeup artist, who I adore. She's like amazing. No, she looks beautiful. Her, She's her, amazing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The makeup looks great. Yeah. I, we're not knocking her by any means. No, I just want to know what she got done. For sure. But the, you can see that her lip actually goes right here, and then the, the liner is above it, which is fine for a picture or for confessionals. Of course, you want to accentuate everything, right? So, so before, right there, she has all this extra skin, which I have right now. Was it... You do not have that. Was, was is that from a facelift now? Because she looks great here. Yeah, so it looks like... So it does look... Yes, this is um, a lower facelift, 100%. So you can see that she has... She has all the skin here and tissue, right? So it looks like it was a full lower facelift bringing this all up, like super, super medical term is snatched. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You do not have that. No, I do. I have that. Like, you, I could just go like this. Uh -huh. It's like gone. Yeah. It's like nothing. But I feel like I need a little tightening. Yeah, you could do that just like that. Yeah. Boom. And by the way, we all need that. Do you know how many Did you show everybody that I, you could fix this for me? Yeah. Uh-huh. We're just like this. I've done it. I've done it on myself. Do you think Once I need a, a year. Do you think I need a neck lift? Not at all. I would just do I know that you had a bad experience with threads, but I would just do this. Okay. And That's, how long do threads last? Uh mine lasts about eighteen to twenty four months. Oh my god. Okay, yeah. now I wanna know what's wrong with her skin. Like she's got skin damage. So you see her face. It yes. looks all nice. But her skin looks like it's leather. Like looks, straight out, like like she's thick. got nasty skin. Looks, We'll look better in the before picture. Uh -huh. But yeah, so this is the obvious, this is way too much sun exposure. So you see that her face, her face and her body do not match. So when, I mean, people do lasers, they do all sorts of skin treatment for their faces, but then look at her body. So we want, we always want it to match, especially like whenever I do lasers, microneedling, I always do face, neck, chest, hands, because it's like, what we see, you wear a dress, you wear an outfit, you see from here up, that's the frame. Um, so what can you do for, just to stay out of the sun? Cause this is like tan, 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 tan. Uh -huh. And over time, right, you're gonna lose all that collagen and elastin and get all the sun damage, giving it this leathered look, thicker look. Um, so you need the same stuff that you do on your face, you do on your body. Oh, wow. Okay. So basically if you're, um, 
if you're not rich, you're broke. Or what does it go? You're not ugly, you're just you're just broke. How does it go? I don't know, something like that. <laughs> you're not I mean, ugly, she, you're she just... looked she looked white you're trash. Not ugly. Yeah. You're just broke. She looked uh kind of white trashish. Now she looks like overdone. She looks great. I think she looks great. It's just her skin is damaged. Right? Yeah, I think that if you did a few tweaks like we talked about, so like bringing this down right here, lifting up the medial brow a little bit, I mean, and then treating the like the the sun damage all over, that would look really nice. And I know in our, we can't see her neck here. Uh, sorry, I'm pointing at you. But um, but in my last review, she just needs to like lift the neck a little bit, and it, it, they're just like minor tweaks. I mean, the body is going to take a little bit of work. But can you reverse skin damage like of that? Of course. You can. Of course. Yeah. Wow. Yes. I mean, this is going to take some time to do. But yes, absolutely. And what do you do for that? Um, you can do laser. I would start, I, whenever I do body work to get off sun damage of arms, legs, I like to start with a peel first because it's not expensive. We can just like get the bulk of it off and then start getting in and do the laser treatments, the microneedling to tighten the skin, remodel the skin, get the sun damage off, and then like send over bulk sunscreen. Well, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for this. And um, thank you for critiquing me as well, because <laughs> we all need to be better and you know what to do. So thank you. Oh my gosh. Um, we yeah. got to do like a uh, Melissa Gorga next. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching and let us know who you want to see next in the comments below.